once I smoke this blunt, girl, I'm gon' forget to. Hey, hood, hood, rich, hood, 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 rich, hood, rich, gang, the army, the navy, the unstoppable. What's the word, G's? How you living, man? Welcome back to the video. You know what I'm saying? Shit, God, Gemini, man. I'm here. Like, we about to get into this video, bros. Let me tell you what it's about before we jump right in, bro. Shout out to What's the Numbers TV, man. He coming with a goodie. So today, we getting into a video about a party promoter, bro. Club promoter who was doing his thing. I, I think VA or North Carolina, bro, doing his thing, getting money, right? We not in New York with it today. You know what I'm saying? I'm sitting in New York. This video took place, like, we in, like, North Carolina, gang, down south. Nigga was a party promoter getting money, getting a bag, bro. But the whole time he was a party promoter, he was also selling narcotics in the club. And finally, it looked like it all added up, collapsed in on him. I guess some snitches came out the woodworks. And that's what got son done in, bro. Life in prison for selling narcotics while he was a club promoter. Let's get right into it, man. I hope everybody feeling good, man. Get you something to spark up, you know what I'm saying? If that's your style. If it ain't, get you something to drink. Whatever it is you need, man, let's go. Let's get right to it. Let's get that ad. The profile piece. This one is on Mario Mitchell. In this video, we're going to take a look at his early years coming up in North Carolina. Then we'll focus on his love for the nightlife and entertainment industry as he was involved in both for many years. After that, the focus will be on Mario's rise in the drug game and the drama that came with it, before finally speaking on how everything played out and where Mario is currently at today. Yeah, when you hear Mario, don't think he's sweet. Nigga. Don't think, uh, ooh, it's a me, Mario. Nah, don't think that Mario, nigga. This Mario, he might have had some mushrooms. He might have had some mushrooms that was for sale because you heard he had the, you know what I'm saying, the psychedelic substances in the club so mushrooms he might have been like mario and had him some mushrooms but we ain't talking about that mario ain't no luigi with this mario mario mitchell better known as rio is from durham north carolina growing up on the south side of the city would be cool for rio as a kid but as his adolescent years began rio started to want more for himself so next like many kids his age rio would dive into the streets as a way to make some money Facts. Already pretty. I've been there. I ain't gonna cap, bro. I ain't gonna sit here and lie to you, bro. That's the way to get it. When you coming up poor, you ain't having it. Like, you know how to go, young niggas have it. No, I wasn't a young nigga having, bro. I had to go get it. Like, I didn't have it. I had to go get it. Like, it didn't just come to me. So I could I could feel Rio and what he was going through and what he had to do. He felt he had to do what he had to do to get it. Nigga, I respect that. Known in his neighborhood and his surrounding areas, it was easy for Rio to expand and make connections in the drug game. And over time, his illegal hustle started to grow. During this time, he would also become a familiar face in the nightlife scene in the Durham-Raleigh area, which led him into the music and party promotion business as another way for him to make some money. Eventually, listen, nigga, nigga started diversing his income, bro. Started getting money doing a club promotion. I know a lot of dudes that have changed their life. They wasn't lit, but they got one little gig doing party promotion, bro. They changed their whole life. Now they lit. That's their whole gig. They the party promoter. They lit on Instagram. They lit. They get hoes. They get, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, they get the hoes, because don't get it messed up, man. Party promoters get the hoes, bro. The hoes want to be at the party, right? Somebody got to book the hoes. Hoes don't want to pay. They want to get in for free. Who they, what they do? Hit up the promoter they know. They want to get in with the section. They want to know when the niggas with the vibe was going to be there. Boom. They in cool with a, with a, a club promoter. Trust me, I know I used to be in a, a part of a squad. Shout out to my nigga. My nigga Fresh. Shout out to my nigga Fresh from Cortland. My nigga Fresh, from Cortland. And we was locked in. And you know that's crazy because y'all know how Cortland and Patterson give it up. But I do rock with a few. Don't get it twisted. There's a couple of real ones from Cortland that... If you a real one, bro, real ones rock with real ones, bro. Shout out my nigga Mike from Cortland, a real one. You know what I'm saying? We ain't just, just shouting out a bunch of Cortland niggas, but I'm just saying, though, I know some real ones from Cortland is what I'm saying. You feel me? Real was start a record label called Faculty Entertainment and had a few artists with B-Stacks being the front runner on the label. They would throw big parties, flying in some of the hottest Instagram models at the time. What I told you, he the club promoter, bro. Starting a label should be easy. Why? Because you're going to have access to the clubs to shoot videos in. You're going to have access to the hoes to put them in the video, to have them around the artists, making them look like something, to have them on Instagram. Bro, it's, it, I ain't going to lie. If you're a club promoter, starting a label might be one of something you want to do because all the artists want to know you. All the young up-and-coming artists that don't got no label yet want to be in the know. They want to be around you. You know what I'm saying? It's actually smart, bro. He's smart for that. I respect it, bro. Club promoter, narcotic sales, and a label owner. Get that money, my nigga. Get that money. And on the music side of things, 
they had B Stacks doing interviews on thisis50.com, as well as collabing with different artists and producers from New York to Atlanta. To the public, things were looking good for Rio and faculty ENT, but behind the scenes, there were issues in the streets over the years. In 2007, Rio got shot by a club in Raleigh. Mm. Then it's alleged. <coughs> so Rio was having an ops, nigga. Nah, nigga, Rio was fly, 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 nigga, nah, nigga. Rio was having ops, nigga. Yeah, long, 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 nigga. Stop playing with me, nigga. How about the car? Fa, 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 fa. Stop playing with me, nigga. Rio was having static, nigga. It wasn't sweet, nigga. Police report. Campbell Hill. Nightclub pop off may be gang related. The six victims went to UNC Hospital and Duke University Hospital for non life threatening guns. Okay, non life threatening, so the shooter don't got aim. The shooter was just fa, 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 but he had no aim. That Rio had issues with another well known Durham drug dealer named Face Diddy and his FMF crew. Face Diddy. Face, who some say had more money and power at the time. Eventually got locked up in 2008. Yo, I never understood. I could never understand why niggas who actually sell dope be walking around with that dope shirt. This shirt right here, bro. This shirt right here, bro. Face who some say. This shirt right here, bro. I never understood how you could actually be out here. You got dope in your nuts right now. Dope on you. And you know you out here getting money, but you wearing a shirt that says dope. You retarded. You're advertising. You want to get caught up, bro. Like, niggas is ready, bro. That's my word. More money and power at the time. Eventually, he got locked up in 2008 and sentenced to life. I bet he did. The nigga was selling work and had a shirt that said dope on it. Read prison. I mean, my bad. You can't say that on YouTube. I apologize. I didn't mean that. There, many people say Rio took it to another level as he was the big dog in town now. The money started rolling in like never before, which in tune helped his parties get bigger and better. Hey man, the party's getting bigger, the label growing, you getting more money. As the parties get bigger, the more money you making because you getting money in the club. You know what I'm saying? You getting money in the club, you getting money in and out the club, you getting money. Then in late 2013, early 2014, Rio and faculty ENT would get into it with a well-known blood member named Messiah. This beef wouldn't just stay in the streets though, as it made its way into the music as rappers in each camp drop diss tracks to the opposing side. A lot of Rio's problems with I ain't even gonna lie. A lot of times, bro, beef will turn two rappers up that's not lit. I ain't even gonna lie, bro. I done seen it. A beef will get people involved, people be interested in, in y'all music and all that, and we never cared before. We never cared, bro. We never cared. Like, we did not care before, but now that y'all beefing, it's a little interesting, like, what he said about him? Oh, he exposed him for what? You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna lie. The beat be interesting, bro. Like, controversial issues gonna bring views, bro. On the club and make his way to the streets through the gangs and drug dealing. Rio, who wasn't a gang member himself, was still affiliated with the Omega set of the nine trade bloods through his crew. And depending on who you ask. Okay. Nigga, Rio was a Billy, nigga. If he wasn't a Billy, he was rocking with the Billies. Okay, Billy. What you was on? Let me, Rio, what you, what type of drama you about to get into? I got a feeling Rio about to turn up, nigga, for the bellies. Well respected and feared in the area. In the summer of 2015, the FBI would start investigating Rio and his associates as a response to a spike in gang violence in the area, which the feds thought was a result of a blood turf war surrounding the drug trade in Durham. Could have been. Then in January 2016, the federal task force assigned to Rio and his crew initiated a court order wiretap on all of their phones as a way to gather more information. Mm, this sound like how they got the, uh, listen, same thing going on there, going on here, bro. Same thing going on in New York City, going on in every other state, bro. Wiretaps, wiretaps. Like, niggas, stop talking on, y'all better learn how to FaceTime. If you out here doing something you're not supposed to be doing, you better get you an iPhone and learn how to FaceTime, nigga. Like, Catch up, bro. They're jacking them. I'm not jacking you talking to me about no lick you hit. None of that on the phone. Don't tell me. Nigga, don't. I, nigga, I don't with no snitch, nigga. So don't tell me who telling. Don't tell me. Don't tell, don't tell me about the lick you hit. None of that. They did the operation. I can't tell you about that lick we hit on phones because I know better. A crew. The wiretap revealed that the organization was receiving large quantities of cocaine, 
Much of it shipped from California and containers used to package furniture and that gang members were being used as distributors and enforcers. During the three months the wiretap was in place, evidence showed that Rio and his associates distributed 23 kilos of cocaine. Sheesh. When Rio- Damn, 23 kilos? How they get the exact math? Like, somebody telling. Somebody gots to be telling, my boy. Like, how they know the exact number, 23 kilos? Like, how? Stacks and the rest of the group <laughs> members were arrested in April 2016. Task Force members see 7.6 pounds of cocaine and 3.5 pounds of heroin and jewelry, including a $50,000 wristwatch. Nah, so they, that's one thing we're not going to sit here and act like these niggas wasn't having it. These niggas was having it, bro. I'm not even going to lie. This, these niggas was tweaking, bro. They money, they, they, I, I ain't going to say tweaking because they just treat niggas trying to get money, but these niggas was getting money, gang. The case will play itself out in court for a little over a year until Rio decided to plead guilty in June of 2017. He copped out to conspiracy to distribute and possess five kilograms or more of cocaine, one kilogram or more of heroin, and a quantity of marijuana. He also copped to conspiracy to commit money laundering and possession of a firearm. And in December of 2017, Rio was sentenced to 35 years in federal prison. His former artist B. Stacks, who was also arrested in an indictment, pled guilty also and was sentenced to 20 years. Rio was currently locked up at FCI Bennettsville serving his time with a release date in 2046. Jeez. But yo, it's what's the numbers TV is. So he really ain't getting life. He just got hit. I think he got an L at the end of his sentence though. So if you got an L at the end of your sentence, you know what I'm saying? If it say 35 to life, that's damn near life, bro. Cause they can keep on hitting. You go to you go see the board in 35 years, nigga be like, nah, we ain't feeling you. And just keep hitting you, keep hitting you, keep hitting you, and you never come home. So I ain't gonna lie, it's tricky. It's tricky, my guy. Big profile piece on Mario Mitchell. He had him a little baddie right here in this video, man. Mario, I see you, my boy. Known as Rio, out of the Durham area, you know what I'm saying? Durham, Raleigh, shout out to Bull City, shout out to the Raleigh area, shout out to the whole North Carolina. Now, you know, Rio's currently 40. Facts. Shout out to the whole North Carolina. I don't know many people out in North Carolina, but I got family in North Carolina, so shout out to North Carolina. So he recently turned 40. He's doing his time. He's on. Damn, he recently turned 40. He don't come out till like 2040. That's enough. That's like 40 years from now, bro. Sheesh. I said 40. That's like 20 years from now, bro. 20 years from now. Well, less than 2017. Sheesh. You know, basically in the feds, just trying to hope maybe he gives some of that time back. Maybe he got some lawyers that, you know, maybe he get a sentence reduction or son. I don't know. Compassionate, you know, release. Whatever it's called. Maybe he could get some time back. I didn't see no murders that he copped out to or anything like that. It's pretty much just drugs. So, you know, with all these laws passing, maybe he won't have to do the whole 35 years. Whereas right now, he got to release there in 2046, 35 years. 2046. We in 2023, my boy. 2046, damn. That nigga got to do. No, he's going to do 20. Uh, he, probably, he probably do just at 20 with some of that time knocked off, bro. Maybe a little less than that feds a lot of people that was in the indictment got time like i said his artist b stacks he got a dub because you're not going if he get if you get sentenced to 35 years let's just say 35 years without a l you probably come home in like 20 right 35 you probably come home in like 21 22 years type you know what, I mean? what you think like yeah you get sentenced to 35 bro you probably come home in like unless but he got an elbow at the end though my boys what am i talking about he go, he going he gonna be eligible for eligible for parole at least. You know what I'm saying? So he'll be home before before Rio is looking like. But you know they always doing their thing. You know what I'm we'll saying? See. You know about North Carolina. I mean, you can't say guarantee though. We can't say he'll be home because you never know. Nigga. First of all, you locked up for the next 20 years, nigga. Who knows? You might catch a body behind the wall, nigga. You know what I'm saying? You never know. On the party scene, you know you got Tim Boss out there doing his thing. Tim the Boss, he's like one of the big big party promoters out there. I know when that whole Cardi first came out. He had a big, like a weekend with Cardi B out there and he like made a bunch of money and blew up. And ever since then, you've seen him on Instagram a lot more. But he been doing his thing out there. You understand what I'm saying? Before he was really the man in the club scene, you know, he was messing with Rio. All right, man, listen, we gonna get up off this nasty, bro, man. Listen, Rio was a street nigga trying to turn his money into legal money. Unfortunately, though, he didn't stop getting street money. Like, you know what I'm saying? He kept on getting street money, kept on getting into hood beef, shootout. What, you know, what's gonna stop the money every time, bro? Beef. Beef gonna stop the money every time. It could, see, rap beef, if you just rapping about it and not actually out here, you know what I mean, popping it up, 
then yeah, you can make money off the beat. But once it actually starts to turn to gun violence and all that, clubs stop wanting to book you. You start you start being hot. You got people on your back. You can't get money the way you was. So that was the recipe for disaster. Man, he never stopped getting illegal money. He kept it illegal while he was getting legal money, and that's the problem, bro. Jimmy Gang, man, y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments about this, bro. Like. I feel like I'm not mad at a street nigga trying to turn his money legal and do the legal thing and get out the streets that way. That's the goal, bro, to get out the streets, bro, before we dead or in jail for 100 years. You feel me? So I ain't mad at it, but unfortunately, he got caught up, bro. Them wire taps, he wasn't smart enough to hit the FaceTime and all that. Like, free that man, no. Free that man. He ain't kill nobody. You feel me? I'm off this nasty. I'll see y'all in the next one, gang. Be good. Subscribe to the channel. Like the video, my boys. I'm gone, though.